Hey guys, I'm Saurav and in this video, let's talk about black and white photography. Now, black and white photography is about, of course, capturing black and white images, right? You have color images and just you desaturate the colors and you get black and white images. Now, the question is, if your camera sensor is trying so hard to capture all the colors, to capture all the details in the colors, then why are you exactly desaturating it? What is the purpose behind black and white photography? Now, if you have this question in mind, you're actually thinking in a very right direction. And there are many reasons exactly why people prefer black and white photograph and why even you should start thinking actually to take black and white images. The main reason for me is sometimes I find the colors distracting. So basically, why do you take images? You take images to tell a story to the viewer, right? You want to convey a message to the viewer. Now, if the colors are actually not helping the viewer to convey the message, then what's the point, right? Basically, you want the image to convey the message. And if the colors are not helping it, you basically try to remove the colors. So if you find the colors distracting, if the colors are not helping to tell the story, then try to desaturate the colors. Try to make the image or try to convert the image in black and white and see how that is working. So what I generally do is I take an image and then if I feel the image is not working properly, I just go into the Lightroom develop module and I use the black and white feature of the Lightroom and then I get a basic starting point and I get an idea whether this image is going to look good in black and white. So the first reason was obviously if the colors are distracting, try to actually go for a black and white image. The second reason is sometimes when you don't have enough drama in the colored image, maybe converting the same image into black and white can bring much more drama, okay? So if you see the images right now, you will see that the colored images kind of look flat. Generally, when you're shooting in overcast situations, these situations actually tend to happen. So that time what I prefer is actually trying black and white and if I kind of am able to get much more dramatic images, it solves the purpose, okay? So whenever you feel the images are not much more dramatic, try black and white, right? The next reason why I prefer black and white is is basically you start to see light in a different manner, okay? Because when you see black and white images, you have only one thing to play and that is light, okay? The tonal difference between the highlights, the shadows, and that is what is helping to create a black and white image. When you're not thinking about the colors, you're much more focused on the light, much more focused on the composition, and it will help you to create better images. You might not know that you will capture images in better composition. So even though you want that image not to be in black and white, but to be colored, still you have an image with better composition, right? So black and white will help you to think in a better manner and you will see a drastic change in the way you're taking the images, okay? Now, as I'm speaking, you will see some images on the screen, of course, and that will actually help you to understand why I'm exactly saying these things about black and white photography. So, of course, black and white photography is completely different, okay? It's an artistic point of view. Some people might love black and white photography. I know some people that only shoot black and white images. Some people might not like, but for me, it's like it's a different genre altogether, okay? Black and white photography is exactly a different genre for me because when you're shooting in black and white or when you're shooting colored images but you have in mind that you want to shoot a black and white image, you're thinking in a very, very different manner, okay? You're thinking in a manner where you don't have the colors but you have the light to play with. So, of course, it's a very interesting genre and if you have not tried black and white photography or if you are not thinking while shooting then i think it's a very important step to take you know take the important step take efforts see different black and white images i was inspired by ansel adams when i saw his black and white landscape images of yosemite national park i was completely completely amazed and shocked to see how beautiful black and white photographs can be so even though you don't have the colors you can still create amazing looking images I'm not saying that colored images are not good. Though uh, colored images are completely different, okay? If the colors are helping you to tell the story, as I said before, it's great. You know, colors can be a very powerful tool to tell the stories, okay? There are certain images where the color is the most important part. 
But again, you know, every time you won't get situations like that. So if you feel the images are not working out for you, then maybe try black and white, okay? I will show you now how do I exactly edit the black and white images to get the best black and white results from the colored images. So let's start editing the images. So I'm in Adobe Lightroom and I'm going to tweak the image like I tweak every other raw file. So I'm going to increase the vibrance here particularly because I'm going to use the details from the vibrance. Uh, I mean, I'm going to use the details from the colors to make a black and white image. So exactly what I'm talking about, you will understand in a bit. So make sure you actually increase the vibrance up to a level where it doesn't look fake, but you get good colors and good separation between the colors because that will ensure that you get a good black and white image image right so I would use about something about 55 then with the help of the tone curve I'll just lift the lights part and just make the darks a bit more darker to add that contrast okay so with the help of tone curve I added that contrast which it was lacking so in the black and white module you can have a good starting point as I said before and basically not only this you also have a black and white mix which you get in Adobe Lightroom where you can actually tweak the luminosity of each and every color so as I said the information from the colors are going to be really really important so depending on what color you are selecting you can actually make it lighter or darker depending on what kind of image you want. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave the image colored in Lightroom and I'm going to do the black and white in Photoshop. I'm, I would just make the sky a bit darker by reducing the luminosity of the blue color. And that's it, okay? That was it. And I will just sharpen the image. So this editing that you're seeing right now is very basic, okay? And then I would just take it into Adobe Photoshop and now I have it. Now, again, this is a colored image. I would open Color FX Pro 4 from Google Nick and basically I use this software to kind of add a bit of contrast to my image. So bit of contrast if it's added it looks a more punchy and looks better. So once I'm happy with the colors, once I'm happy with the contrast then I would make a new layer and then I would use Silver Effects Pro 2 again by the same company Google Nick. Okay the software is free the link will be in the description below. So when you open Silver Effects Pro you basically see 38 presets on the left hand side and each and every preset actually has a different look to it. If you see like each and every preset kind of changes the way the image looks right. So depending on what kind of final effect you want like for this one I would go with the low key too because I think it actually separates the highlights a lot better. So I'm going to use this particular preset but again it depends on image to image and your personal preference. So if you see right out of the box if you see the shadows are way too much crushed the shadows are way too darker I mean so I'm going to fix that but the starting point is going to be the low key 2 preset. I'm just going to make it a bit more brighter and I'm just going to decrease the contrast because I'm overall happy with this and what you see right now is basically global adjustments meaning it is actually getting applied to the overall image right you can also adjust the shadows and highlights so as I said the shadows were a bit darker so I would just leave the shadows so that I don't get crushed shadows and I get some details in the shadows which I really like okay so I'm going to do same with the highlights and that is all about the global adjustments that I wanted to do for selective adjustments that are going to do adjustments not globally but locally locally I'm going to use something that is very very powerful and my favorite feature of this software that is the control point. So you can add control points. What do I mean by that is basically you can point a place in your image, point a actually luminosity and then when you decrease or increase the luminosity, brightness, contrast or structure only that part will get affected. You can increase the size and you can see just with one control point the image is looking completely different right. The mood of the image has changed overall a lot. It's a completely different looking image. No one would believe that this was taken in morning time just because the way we have edited this particular image. So control points they might look like a very uh, small feature but believe me it's extremely powerful okay and the best thing is you can not only add one control point you can add many control points so if you feel the image is a bit darker at certain parts or brighter you can add those control points and only tweak those things okay only tweak those parts 
So of course, this is a quick edit, which I'm showing you for the tutorial purpose. But when I was editing the image for myself, I spent more time with the control points and tweak the image the way I wanted to. You can also see which parts are affected and which parts are not. You have color filters too. So basically in color filters, if you select different colors, you will get different looking results. That's because like every color has a different look to it when you convert it into black and white. So depending on what kind of look do you prefer, you can select the colors, you can change the hue and strength also. So you get a lot of options and even color filters sometimes can be a lot more handy. You also can choose different film types, but I don't generally play with it. As I was saying, you have a, like a black and white mix in Lightroom. Here you have sensitivity and those things perform exactly in the similar manner. You can change the luminosity of a selected color and of course if the colors are well defined it becomes much, much way easier and basically the results, the overall results look much better. So you can spend more time with this software and you can just tweak the images the way you want and here is the before and here is the after. Look how dramatic the overall change is. So I did the same with this particular image. So this was actually the file that I brought from Lightroom. So let me show you the raw file that I had. So this was a raw file, okay? Then I added some contrast, I added some vibrance to get this particular look so that the subject actually stands out. But the colors are still a bit more distracting. So I got into Color Effects Pro 4, I added some more contrast, again, then made a layer, and then I use Silver Effects Pro 2 to get this particular result. So as you can see, again, in the black and white image, the subject stands out way more than the colored image because now there are no colors to distract. So I hope you enjoyed the video on black and white photography. Now you know why black and white photography is so important and how to exactly post-process the images to get the best black and white images possible. So give it a try, take efforts, maybe learn something new while you're shooting black and white and become a better photographer at the end of the day, right? So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you're liking this type of content, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see something more in this channel, again, feel free to comment. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Click amazing pictures. Bye.